Welcome back to Completely Karen. Thank you guys so much for watching all my videos. I've really been getting a lot of views and a lot of subscribers and a lot of comments and I just want to say thank you to you guys because it's getting me so excited and it just makes me want to make more and more videos and I'm just really loving this community that is forming. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, I also wanted to say I'm really sorry that I haven't been able to get out the Killing Eve reviews as quickly as I would have liked. Um, work is killing me. It's so busy and I just feel like I never have extra time to do the things that I really want to do, which is being able to make more videos. So if you feel inclined, anyone is welcome to go to my Patreon account. It is patreon.com slash completely Karen and you can become a patron there. And if you don't and you just want to watch the videos because they're fun or you want to interact, that is totally great too. Either way, I just am super glad that you guys are here and I'm always very excited to be able to make videos for everyone out there. So thank you again for watching. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into this Killing Eve um, episode five review. I loved episode five. It was, I think, my favorite episode. It was so good. It was just, it was everything. I mean, it was literally everything. Okay, so... Um, where do I even start? Okay, spoilers. I have to say that. I will go into spoilers. I always do in my reviews. So if you haven't seen episode five yet, go watch it and then come back. So the beginning of the episode, Eve's decision to stop the car and get out and be like, I'm just going to go talk to her because I feel like she needs something or wants something. And the fact that Elena and Frank are in the back of the car and they are literally like freaking out, like, don't you do this. She is an assassin. She's going to murder us all. What are you thinking? And Eve just takes a minute and she's like, let me get in my Zen place. I need to think about this. I loved it. I loved that she got out of the car. I loved that little wave that she gave. And it just like literally stops Villanelle in her tracks. And Villanelle's like, wait a minute, what's going on? I think that's one of the reasons that Villanelle is really quite attracted to Eve in so many different ways is because Villanelle's really good at reading people. She's very manipulative and she has kind of this control over people and she kind of can guess or figure out what their move is going to be. And I don't think that she can do that with Eve. I think that Eve surprises her in the way her mind works and she does things that Vil does not expect or has never had happen to her before and it's intriguing. At least that's kind of what I get from this. She wasn't expecting Eve to stop the car and get out and be like, hey, let's talk. It was surprising and it stopped her and I think that's just one more reason why Villanelle is like, there's something about this person that like, I really connect to and and want to study and get to know. So sorry, I keep looking down. I wrote notes because there was so much that happened in this episode that I didn't want to like forget anything to talk about. I probably still will even though I wrote it down. So, you know, I'm sorry. Um, you guys can just remind me in the comments, which I'm so thankful that you have. Thank you to the person who told me what the people's names were. The handler, Constantine, or Constantine, not really sure how to say it, but, um, and then Kenny, the computer genius. So thank you, person, that was amazing. I really should have probably written your name down and I'm sorry that I didn't, but I appreciate that you were willing to comment and let me know what their names were. So I'm gonna try and remember those now. <clears throat> Okay, so let's talk about Frank again for just a minute. Oh, Frank, you are the worst ever. Okay, so I loved the episode where they're in the restaurant after they, like, you know, drive away and they're like trying to get some information out of him. Like, why did you do this? What were you thinking? And he's just being typical dorky Frank. And he's like, can I go get some more sauce? Blah. And... I loved that Elena was like my favorite line of the whole episode where she was like, I literally can't believe that like people were paying that guy for information because he's such a doofus. He's like, I mean, I mean, clearly they chose the right guy and they were able to like wiggle in and use his wife's sickness as a way to get information, but he truly is the worst spy ever. 
And the fact that he like let them wiggle in is even just reinforces how bad he is at his job. Um, but it was a funny scene, a funny episode. There were so many things in this episode where I was just laughing out loud in such a good way. And my, my eyes got big and I was shocked and excited. It was, ugh, there's just so much to talk about. Okay. Um, so the interview with Frank, who are the 12? What, what's this chaos that they are creating? And the, like he literally, Carolyn was right when she was like, for somebody who says that they don't know very much, he really knew a lot. He knew a lot about what was happening on the British side of things. And he knew a lot of what, like he knew a lot of information about um, the people that he had been talking to more so than even their assassin knew, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, but so the 12, I'm really excited to see where that storyline goes and how that kind of plays out. Um, okay, so Kenny being Carolyn's son. I wasn't really surprised. Um, I didn't really see it in any of the previous episodes, but the second that she was asking Eve how Kenny was doing after Bill's death, and she casually mentions his father died recently and so maybe just keep an eye on him. Right there, I was like, um, Kenny's her son. Because a boss, I just don't think would say anything. It, they would be like, we're gonna keep a separation of, you know, work and personal life. But a mother, a mother's instinct will always be, how is my child? How are they coping? Are they doing okay? With something very traumatic, like a death of a coworker. And so right when she said that, I was like, oh, Kenny's her son. I did not see that, but now it makes sense. So there you go. So I'm excited that Kenny's her son. Okay, so we have to talk about the home invasion, right? Okay, so first of all, Home invasion is like my biggest fear. I always have this fear that like someone's gonna get into my house. I'm a crazy person at night with locking the doors and making sure all the windows are closed because I'm a freak. So when <laughs> Eve is at her house and she's tried on the dress and she looks amazing and she's just hanging out at her house and she hears something and then she is by the stairs, you know what I'm talking about, and she sees Will and Elle, her reaction I think is mine a hundred percent and I would guess a lot of people's reaction. There's a serial killer in your home, someone that you know, you're home alone, what do you do? You freaking scream and run away and lock yourself in a room somewhere and hope that they can't break in. <laughs> but she is screaming the whole time, she's freaking out and the whole time Villanelle's like, shut up, I'm not gonna hurt you. She doesn't care because why would you believe that person, right? No. So it was so real to me, that reaction of like, oh shit, there's someone in my house. I've been invaded. Like it was so great. I loved it. And then when Villanelle kicks the door down and her weapon is the toilet brush. Oh my God. I was dying. Like the funniest thing Ever. Like what? What is that? That's not gonna do anything. It's so funny. I loved it. I just love the writing of this and like sometimes I wonder even with that scene like was that written or was that something that like just Sandra O oh had chosen to do on spur of moment like in the moment and they just kept it because it was so funny and so great. I don't know. It would be really interesting to know but I just this whole show you know me, I'm just a big, huge fan. Can't get enough. Okay, so every scene with them in the house was amazing. Sitting down to eat, I just want to eat dinner with you, and how like freaked out but trying to be calm Eve was the whole time and trying to get information, bringing the knife to the table, and of course Villanelle sees it and knows and understands what she's trying to do, and but if she gives her permission, you can keep it if it makes you feel safe, you know? And her trying to sit down and she has to take it over. I mean, it was just so great. So funny, comical, but like creepy at the same time to be eating with this serial killer woman who for some reason, unbeknownst to Eve, is like obsessed with her. It's just great. Okay, so this conversation that they have at the dinner table um, where she's like, why are you doing this? What happened to you? I know who you are, you know, you're Oksana, blah, blah, blah. And 
just the just the fact that Villanelle has the audacity to even like try and bullshit her way through that and be like, I just can't handle it. You know, I need help and I don't know, I don't know why I am this way and blah, 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 and the fake tears. And Eve is like, I'm sorry. I'm calling bullshit on all of that because I see right through you. And once again, I feel like Villanelle was surprised by that, maybe. Like, oh, this person is maybe seeing me for who I truly am and I can't trick her and it makes me like her even more. Um, so just that whole conversation was really intriguing, really great. The fact that Villanelle does not know who is giving her these orders um, you know, she takes Eve's phone, could, <laughs> as I'm thinking about it, I'm dying. Could Eve's code on her phone have been better? One, two, three, four, like, okay, literally how many of you out there is that your code? I want to know. I was laughing so hard. She's a freaking MI6 spy and her code is one, two, three, four. It's the best. Okay, so anyway, she takes her code. She obviously watches the video. She goes to Frank's to murder him. And then we get, you know, the final scene, which I really wanna talk about in just a second, but I wanna talk a little bit about her with Frank and that conversation that they have, which is so creepy about, um, you know, she's asking him if he's scared to die and he's like, well, I have kids. And then she's like, well, this will be something they can bond over, which is so sad, but so true at the same time. Um, but her whole idea of what happens to someone's spirit when they leave, you know, in other episodes when she's really just kind of watched the life leave someone and she watches their eyes and she really just focuses on that. That is what she's looking for. She's trying to figure it out and how she's like, everyone says that, um, that the spirit leaves your body when you die, but I don't think so. I think it goes deep inside you and just gets smaller and smaller and so small that it can't hold on to any life. That was a really creepy answer and it just makes me think that that's what she's looking for she is just she gets that high and that excitement from watching this happen when people die she's such a fascinating character villanelle is my fave i just love her so much okay so now um let's move on to the very final scene Villanelle's at her apartment. Constantine's there. They're talking. You know, he's telling her that uh, the girl, I don't remember her name, from the other episode isn't dead and that she probably might want to go take care of that before she starts talking. Um, which is going to be really interesting because we might actually get to eat, meet Anna. Mm, mm, mm. Excited about that. Okay. But when she asks Con Constantine, what number are you? And he's like, what? Um, what number of the 12 are you? And his reaction was so perfect, like, oh dear. And then just her face, like she looked hurt, she looked confused, she looked determined. And then Constantine's face was like, this is not good. She, she cannot know that and it's too late and now what do we do? Um, it was just, everything about this episode was to the T perfect, I thought. Leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite parts were or what you really took away from the episode, what you loved, what you focused on, what was symbolic to you, any of that stuff. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for interacting. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate it. Make sure and check out my website. It's completelykaren.com. And then, like I said, we've got Patreon and I'm on Facebook and Instagram. All that stuff is below in the, det in the not details, in the description. You can check it out. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure and subscribe so you can keep up on all of my reviews. And I will see you guys next time on Completely Karen. Bye.